How did self-improvement ruin my life? As long as the mind clings to belief, it is held in prison. It's a quote from Krishnamurti. And self-improvement made me believe that I should improve my life in order to get what I want. Let me repeat that. Self-improvement made me believe that I should improve in order to get what I want. So this is what I did. I followed all the methods. I did all the routines in order to improve. At one point, my morning routine was two and a half hours long. I meditated, I read, I exercised, I swimmed, and a whole lot of other things that I believed would improve my life. And honestly, some of them did improve my life. But I found for myself that it is not about improving my life. It is about perfection, about finding a solution, not forever improving and never finding a solution or perfect situation, right? Because that's where you're going with this. You keep improving and there's always something to improve. So things are never perfect. So here's my point. And by the way, you're unserious if you believe me. You're serious if you ask yourself. By the way, I'm Jordan, 23 years old, did over $4 million in revenue, hired over 50 people. And I make these videos on YouTube since 2012. And here's my point. If my mind is at the root of the pain in my life, then improving my state of mind will keep the mind in control forever. Right? Are you still with me? And even though I may experience improvement, for example, experience more positive feelings more often, then the negative feelings will never be gone. They will always remain there. That is my point. I believed improvement to be the solution, for that's all I heard around me on YouTube, wherever I go, went. But the solution is a solution. And for there to be a solution, there has to be a problem. Very honestly, I was not aware of the problem. I just improved. But now that I'm aware that my mind has controlled me since, well, not the day that I was born, but very early in my life. And after realizing that I do not want to be controlled by my mind and the consequences that it creates, I see all the time that I spent on self-improvement as wasted years. And I would have never thought I would said that, right? Because I really believed that reading those books that I've read, and I've read a lot of books, that they were good for me. After all, I was learning good things. I will get back to this in a little bit, but this is time that is very precious. It's, it's something I never get back. And even more precious is I can never go back to the person I was back then, the, the youthful guy. I'm still young, but you get my point, right? But again, disclaimer, please always ask yourself, don't believe me. Don't believe anything that I say is true. It's my story, it's the things that I find to be true. But believing me would be a mistake. And believing anyone for that sake is for the unserious person. So that being said, if I may assume you are exposed to the self-help industry, right? And maybe you took action as well. And you started to include a morning routine. Maybe you now stopped doing it. Maybe you've read a lot of books and still do. And maybe you meditated, whatever it may be. If this is true, then I have a question for you. What do you want from all of this? Really, think about it. Why improve? For what? What do you want? Read one book a month. For what? Meditate 15 minutes a day. Why? Journaling, gratitude, mindfulness, vision boards, visualizing. For what? Why do you do this? Have you ever asked yourself this? Or did you just assume that this is good and that it would help? Just help. If I'm honest, I think that's what I did. I never really questioned for myself. That's why I'm asking you to please think about this for yourself. Just pause here and think about it. I wish I would have done that before. It's just so ignorant of me to just believe anything to be good if someone says it, right? Especially if a lot of people say it because the self-improvement industry is enormous. You know how many books are out there. And I know that no, almost nobody seems to talk about this, which is fine. It's probably the reason why you won't believe me, which is good, but you should not believe anyone for that sake. So let's be honest with ourselves. Did reading money-making books make you more money? Or did you just become a better reader? Did meditation give you lasting peace in your life? Or did you just become a better meditator? I mean, if you could master singing by listening to Michael Jackson, many singers would be legendary. I won't name your heroes. Well, maybe I did. Maybe Michael Jackson is one of them. But if I name your heroes, your mind will be outrageous if I start to say things that are against your beliefs that you heard from them. Or maybe not even heard from them, but the things they imply to be true. 
So let's play a different game with the mind, shall we? Whoever your heroes are, ask yourself, did reading the books that they wrote give you the same results? Or for that sake, even though the things that they maybe promised from reading the book, or even part of it, did watching their YouTube videos give you what you wanted from it? Or did you just distract yourself with entertainment? By the way, I'm not saying that entertainment is bad. For myself, I'm currently watching some documentaries about professional athletes. I'm just asking you to be honest to yourself and to think about it. Because when I did, this is the place when I started to see change. And I've been as honest as I can get in this video. I will tell you, I've wasted many years practicing stuff, watching stuff, reading stuff, doing stuff, thinking about stuff, visualizing things, but did not get a solution. I did not get what I wanted from it. Because I, to be very honest, I did not really know what I wanted from it. I was distracting myself from finding out what I want. That's very honestly what happened. And I really assume that this is true for yourself. But is this not a massive waste of time? Just distracting yourself every day. It just maybe sometimes come up, yeah, I would do, think about it another time, what I really want in my life. But that way life keeps just going. And I know this video won't change. Well, basically everyone who watches it. And that's fine. It's more so for the person who watches this and really start to think about this more and more. And maybe sees a change in his or her life. And maybe you hear this for the first time, all, some of the things that I say. And that's good because no, now you can no longer hide from it anymore. So since that is the case, let me say what is really true. We live in this cage inside of our mind, but it is an invisible cage because we believe that it is our own room and therefore that the thoughts are in that room are also ours. Not seeing this cage will keep you trapped forever. So may you get a glimpse of the metal bars surrounding you as we speak. For only then you can start to find a way out. So how can you escape? I won't tell you. For if I do, you will keep asking me how to escape the correct way. And if you have escaped, especially that one, which means you will never find a way out. So I can't help you with this. Nobody can help you with this. Yes, that is difficult if you keep improving yourself all the time and trying to get answers from other people that can't give you answers that you really need. The how will show itself when you've burned your bookshelf. And no, I haven't burned my bookshelf yet, but I don't read them anymore. You were once a wild animal, but you let others pet you. You are now a domestic, tamed member of society, and you listen to everybody else but yourself. Remember, you have genius capabilities, but you rarely use them, for you don't see you have them. And you don't even need to, for there is little desire, probably most people who watch this, to escape from this cage. And where there is no desire, there is no way. And the desire to seek to question why is rare in this world, where many comply. In silence with yourself, explore the always deep down hidden core. And though desire may seem rare, it's within you, deep down there. So I think there has been a question top of mind for you when watching this video, which is maybe like why if all this self-improvement stuff is so bad for you, Jordan, then why does nobody really talk about this? And for that sake, why do you talk about this? Well, all I can say is I understand. I understand why nobody talks about this. Many people are just not aware of this invisible cage of their mind inside. And even for the ones that become aware, like you right now, hopefully, don't have the desire to escape from it. After all, the prison food isn't that bad. The prison itself has a TV and the prison mates provide protection. Do you see? This is why. If you are serious, you may check the show notes. And if you're unserious, then I have a poem here about the essence. Because you love distracting yourself from asking yourself the important questions, don't you? Talk soon. Meditate, read, journal, they say. But the solution only got further away. But neglect my words as you watch along. This poem, my friend, it's not your song. So ask yourself in the quiet of night. Why improve? For what in this fading life? Does a reading bring wealth? or just clear our eyes? Does meditation bring peace or just disguise? We are imprisoned by our mind, but don't see it for it is perfectly designed. Escape is possible, but the path is obscure.
it won't be found in books for that I'm sure. For you must thread your own path, unique and true. For what worked for others may not work for you. So why does no one speak about this invisible cage? Perhaps they're unaware or just not really enraged. For there is comfort in change, though illusory it seems. For many preferable to the terror of shattered dreams. If you dare to question, to seek, to explore, you have a chance to no longer be imprisoned by your mind anymore.